Trying to find some info about targeting your 3D scans? Well, you're in the right place. Today, I'll be talking about where, why, and how many targets you need to 3D scan your parts. Welcome back to the Go Engineer YouTube channel. My name is Jake Wenzel, and today we'll be talking all about targets, how to use them, where, and why. Before we get started, if you haven't already, please go ahead and make sure you hit that subscribe button. Every subscription counts. Whenever I talk to customers about 3D scanning, one of the most common questions I get is how do you know where to put the targets? So today, I'm going to break that down into three topics that you need to keep in mind for when you target your parts for 3D scanning. First off, we're going to be talking about the density of your targets. Your scanner needs at least three targets in order to maintain tracking while it moves around an object. So we need to have three targets visible from every direction that you want to have your scanner in while you're scanning your part. The best way to ensure a smooth scan is by oversaturating your part with targets. So you want a higher density than just three per side in order to have a good scan. My rule of thumb is about four to five in a hand sized area will give you that good density. Next up we're going to talk about what's in proximity to our targets. So when you scan, targets are going to cover up the surface of your part. You're not going to be able to collect any data underneath them. And if you put a target next to a wall or a small feature, it's going to blow out that feature when it removes the target from your scan later. Placing targets too close to each other or too close to features that you want to scan is going to result in your mesh being a little bit distorted in those areas, which could mean that your mesh becomes unusable and you have to scan again. My rule of thumb with where to place targets is I'll always keep them about a quarter inch away from any kind of features I want to measure or sharp edges. And finally, we need to consider the transitions between different surfaces that we want to scan. Sometimes a part will have a lot of surface area that you can fill with targets, but getting from one side of that part to the other can mean moving through a transition where you can't actually see any of those targets. When you're placing targets on your part, you need to keep that in mind. So if you see any of those transitions coming, you might have to increase the density of targets that you have or come up with some kind of auxiliary targeting fixture to sidestep the issue. All right, those are my quick tips. And if you keep those in mind when you're targeting, you should be able to scan just about any part that comes your way. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and leave a comment below. If you have an idea for another video topic you'd like to see, we'd love to hear about it. Visit our website, GoEngineer.com, for professional training, upcoming events, and more from your number one online resource. Till next time.